In this video, we're going to talk you through all of the numbers of the refurbishment of our first buy to let. If you guys are new around here, we're Dan and Jim, and we're property investors based in the northwest of England. On this channel, we're going to document our journey to financial freedom through property. So please join us on it. So guys, it's worth mentioning a little bit about our mindset when it comes to refurbs. First of all, the refurb is very important from uh, increasing the perceived value of the house. But also as investors in property, we're not just here for the next six months. We want these to be lifelong investments that we can keep reaping rewards from for a long time. So we always take quite a serious approach to the, to the refurbishment. We're not just putting a stick in plaster over uh, someone else's problem. We wanna really take ownership of the property, really do it to a high standard so that any maintenance issues are kept to a minimum so we can maximize our cash flow going forward. So we'll start off with the most expensive thing on the refurb for us, which was a complete full rewire. Now this cost 4,056 pounds. Now, this was obviously critical um, to us being able to rent this property out because it wasn't up to standard and the property actually wasn't earthed. So there's sort of no real way for us to get around this. We had to do this, this was critical. Um, so we got a electrician out who's also an investor himself and he sort of walked us through everything. We put more sockets in uh, all of the rooms, which is great for tenants because you can sort of never have enough of them. Uh, all new light switches, all new pendants in all the rooms, two smoke detectors, one downstairs, one upstairs, which is uh, which is uh, you, you have to do to be able to rent the property out. Uh, we put a new extractor fan in the kitchen, an outside light, uh, complete uh, new lights in the bathroom, which was up to the new standards to not let water in, and also uh, an extractor fan, which was linked to the switch for when the light goes on in the bathroom. So we don't want sort of any mold uh, appearing in the bathroom. So this is gonna massively help that. So it will automatically come on to stop the tenants uh, sort of not having any good ventilation in the bathroom, which long term isn't a good thing for us. After that, obviously there was there was a lot of um, a lot of chasing through walls and floorboards up and stuff. So once the sort of re rewire had been done and the new consumer unit was in the front room, um, the property was sort of a bit higgledy piggledy and a bit of a mess. Following on from the rewire. Obviously, there was a lot of channeling uh, that Jim's already mentioned, and that needed to be put right from a plastering point of view. We had a significant amount of plaster work carried out on the property because we liked the finish of plaster, and we really wanted to try and up the, the monthly rent to increase the cash flow. So all of the areas that were channeled out for the rewire were, were replastered. We had the hall stairs and landing walls plastered because previous to this, there was wallpaper, um, and we wanted that nice plaster finish. Finish. Uh, there was bay windows that needed to be plastered because of some superficial cracks. Uh, back bedroom, there was a couple of walls that needed to be plastered. The middle bedroom, the whole room needed to be plastered, including the ceiling. Um, and we had some render work done outside of the property. So the plastering work uh, for materials and labor came to around 2,200 pound. Next uh, is the most expensive part of the refurb after these two, and it's to do with the plumbing slash new bathroom. So purely for materials, we spent 1,220 £1, pound-ish, and that got us a new suite from Victoria Plumbing, including all the multi panel and stuff, which we decided to use because it's a lot uh, cheaper and easier to install than tiling and it's really easy to maintain. You just sort of wipe it clean. Uh, it's like a plastic and you can get all different all different styles and it looks really good, gives you a really good finish, easy to maintain and clean. So that includes that. Also includes all new radiator valves all around the property. And this was part of our wider scope in terms of up in the EPC rating. So if you want to know more about that, uh, well, I'll link a video we made about going from a D to a C on your rental properties and how we've done it. So it included all of those new radiator valves and some new taps. And then we had the labor. Now, this is something we probably could have maybe centralized and got a little bit cheaper because we got the bathroom done and I was like, all right, can you come back and do the radiator valves? Can you come back and put an outside tap in and put a new tap in? So we were sort of drip feeding the plumber's jobs instead of doing a full scope of works and saying, right, we need all of this doing in one go. Because obviously they've got more overheads coming out and stuff all the time. So the overheads for the plumbing labor was £2,120 all in. They've done uh, a good job and they also done the, the, the gas safety for us. That was also included, which is another prerequisite of being able to rent it out as well as the electrical checks 
which the uh, electrician done post post the rewire. So next, the aesthetics of the house needed improving, carrying on from all of the work that had been carried out, the replastering, etc. We did some of the painting ourselves, but we quickly realised this uh, that we were being the bottleneck in the process. So we got a painter that we'd used before in. Uh, he also painted the outside of the house, the front of the house, to up the curb appeal. Uh, the labour costs around uh, associated with the paint were just over a thousand pounds. Next up, we spent about four hundred and sixty pounds on materials and labour for the back of the house and part of the front to be repointed. Now, this was again, like Dan said at the start of this video, about the long-term maintenance view for the property. This was sort of very aligned with that, and you know, four hundred and sixty pounds isn't a lot of money, and it's certainly uh, redoing all the mortar is going to make it more damp proof it actually significantly improved the look from the back of the property if you look at the properties next to it it looks really fresh all the bricks have been cleaned uh, fresh new mortar it looks really spot on so again we didn't want any sort of long-term potential damp issues and uh, losing heat to do the EPC stuff and the, the cost of living crisis you know all of this is gonna the sort of marginal gain to improve that little stuff we decided to, to look at so yeah that was 460 pounds we got uh, our cousin to do it who is done some painting work with a brickie before we got him at, him in at the weekends to sort of do that and we think that was actually a good a good value job for increasing the perceived value because it certainly looks better than the other properties around it. Next up we had uh, some new carpets fitted these were fitted in all of the bedrooms upstairs uh, we decided to go with some uh, underlay as well to help the perceived value of the property um, this was around in total 40 square meters of carpet and this cost us 725 pounds uh, with grippers with underlay with the carpet fully fitted we also decided in the entrance hall of the property to have laminate flooring fitted uh, this materials and labor came to around 270 pounds next up we got some joinery work done at various places in the house so some of it was replacing skating board in the bathroom uh, and we also, in, in the middle bedroom, the door opened up into the room. So we asked our joiner to refit the door the other way. So it opens up against the wall and the radiator. Now, what this does is it creates the perception when someone steps in that the room feels bigger. Because if you imagine the door opens this way, it opens up into the room, it makes the room look and feel smaller. Whereas if it opens up against the wall and the radiator, you're not losing any space there. So that was just a little thing we decided to do, which was a pretty easy win for us with the joiner. And he also boxed in the gas and the electricity in the front room with this lovely, uh, lovely sort of casing thing, which can be used to put TV remotes and coffees on. So all of the joiner work was £300 and it was spot on and he done a, done a really good job. So as you can imagine, with any refurb, there's the need to get rid of waste. Uh, we needed uh, a skip for this. This was £260. Um, in addition, uh, when we were viewing the property, there were some issues with some of the windows. So we had a locksmith come out to fix that, and that was around £150. So next up, we got a roofer we know to come out and generally do give us his sort of opinion on the state of the roof. Wasn't generally too bad. Uh, there was a stack at the back which needed lowering, cleaning out of like ferns and moss and roots and all stuff like that. And then a flagstone putting on top with some vent ventilation on it, which he done for us. He had a look at the, um, the front stack, put some new flashing on it and said that one should be okay. So the roof work sort of came in at around about £600. We already mentioned in a previous video that it was about 12 weeks from the start of the refurb to the end of the refurb. During this time, obviously we're incurring costs of insurance, mortgages, etc. That was around £450 for that period. Finally, we have all of the supplies for the project. Now this was around about £1,500. So this includes everything from paint, paint brushes, the stone for the outside, some like sleepers for the for the garden because we, we dug up all the plants and put some membrane down with stone and like a sleeper. That includes all of that, includes the loft insulation, which up the EPC and just general odds and sods you have when you do a refurb, you know, you need a little tool for this, you need, you need whatever. That was around £1,500. Um, could we have got this a bit cheaper? Possibly, maybe if we tried to centralize um, buying these materials, but again, Stuff crops up when you're in a refurb that you, you you know you can't account for and you just have to sort of go with the flow and nip down to Wix to get some stuff. So another aspect of the refurb that we're paying out of the cash flow is a new boiler. The boiler that was in the property when we got it was very very old and very poor and was very rattly when we turned it on. Um, we wanted to up the EPC rating, so we got a new Worcester Bosch uh, fitted. 
uh, by British Gas on a three years free interest credit. So generally when it comes to the refurb, there's little little bits where we could have saved money, you know, definitely centralizing the plumbing stuff uh, and other sort of little pieces like that. I don't think there's anything major which we could have massively saved money on. Where I do think we could have improved is possibly time because during the refurb, we sort of pro project managed it and done all the little in between jobs like prepping stuff for trades to come in which took up a lot a, a lot of our time and now we both work full time so that would mean we were doing this either the evenings or the weekends which massively slows this down i think we probably came to this conclusion when it comes to the painting uh, the painting just was the part of the refurb which just never ever seemed to end so that's when we then parachuted the painter in to sort of do stuff when we were in work and yeah it costs more but you can get it on the market quicker and rent it out so i think moving forward that's definitely a trade-off where we're sort of willing to make it a good you know that that pounds working for you when when, when you pay, pay the painter to do it and not to mention the fact he is a lot better than we are <laughs> and he relatively wasn't that expensive really for the quality of work he was doing so that's that's definitely a big win but obviously we didn't factor in our time to this because that would have massively bumped up the, the the whole cost of the refair but First one, you know, you sort of want to get in there, get get in the trenches, see what's happening, see how refurb works, see how the trades all interact with each other, managing the trades, getting good trades. So, so that was all part of the process for us, which now we've learned, which facts are into the, to the wider points. I know we did a video about the mistakes we made, but you will learn so much on your first deal that it's like, I'm not saying the price you pay is irrelevant because, you know, you still want to make sure it's a good deal, but like the value of all the learnings you're going to have is the, is the true value add in your first deal. So, in conclusion, we spent £15,300 on this refurb. So, around about 15 k which I think for the type of refurb we've done, it was probably, probably about the party line, probably what you'd be to ex expected to spend on it. Thanks guys for watching this video on the refurb costings breakdown. Be sure to check out the EPC video to see how we upped it from a D to a C. Check out our biggest mistakes video as well. We've been Dan and Jim. Ensure you like and subscribe to this channel so we can bring you more property content. Thanks folks.